Now we're going to look at the cage system. If you look at a piano visually, you can see a major scale in every chunk all the way up. Two black notes, three black notes, two black notes, three black notes, all the way. When you look at a guitar, it's a little harder to see visually what's going on. So the cage system allows us to do that. Now, we've talked about the fact that we have open chords, where the nut is the bar, and we have bar chords, where we use our first finger to make the bar. Um, when we use the cage system, uh, we'll have to do a combination of that. But the cage system is mainly to create a visualization of the neck of the guitar and all of your chord possibilities. Some of these chords to play in the way that I'm going to show you in their entirety, you're going to have a really difficult time playing these if you're a beginner. If you're more advanced, you know, you, you, can, you can do it. But I don't want you to get hung up on trying to be able to play these. This is for you to be able to sit back and see visually what's going on on the guitar. Now there are five chord forms, period. Any chord, anybody's playing. It's one of these five chord forms. It's either a C, an A, a G, an E, or a D. It could be a combination of two of them together. Now, I'm going to use the key of C for numerous reasons. One, it works really well when you're spelling the word caged. We're not just playing a C form chord. We're going to be in the key of C, so it just kind of unifies everything. Um, in the key of C, the first C chord that I can play happens to look like a C chord that I've learned in my open chord position. So this is a C form. Not only is it a C chord because that's the root, but it looks like a C chord. The next C chord that I can play is an A chord form. It's a C chord, but if I were to put a capo right here and play that chord, it would look like the A that I've learned down here. And I've just moved it up the neck. But the root of any chord names that chord. So the next C chord that I can play is a G chord form. This is the root, that's a C note, but it looks like a G chord that you learned down here in your open chords. The next C chord I can play is an E chord form. It looks like this E chord down here, moved all the way up the neck. And the last C chord that I can play form-wise is a D form. This is a C note. Then I'm back where I started. C, A, G, E, D. So the chords fall in the order that the word caged is spelled. C, A, G, E, D. So if I'm in the key of G, it's a G chord, first one that I can play on the neck of the guitar. C, A, G, E. E will be my next chord form that I can use to play a G. C, A, G, E, D. This is a D chord form. That's a G note. This is a G chord. Then I'm back to the beginning. C, A, G, E, D. Back to C. Here's a C chord form. But that's a G note. C, A, A chord form, G chord, G note. C, A, G, all the way back up to where I started, an octave higher. So the cage system is really handy. It shows you your five chord forms, period, there are no more. It's either one of those chord forms or a combination. And it visually lays out the neck of the guitar while spelling a word that's easy to remember. So C, A, G, E, D are the five chord forms, and they always come in that order, no matter what key you're in. 
And from there, if you're a more advanced student and are grasping at this point what I'm saying, you can turn all of these into minor chords. You can turn all of them into major. Major seventh, dominant seventh, ninths, thirteenths. Okay, so this is a system by which you can see the neck of the guitar visually, much in the same way that you can on a piano.